guys, welcome back to another video in this iPhone Swift development series. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at something called Interface Builder. So this is as the name implies where you can create a lot of your interfaces for your iPhone iPad applications. So let's jump right into it by opening up Xcode. We will create a new application. We can choose single view. Let's just call it test something quick and simple. Save it wherever you'd like. And if you've noticed uh, in our last videos, we're just playing around with Xcode and seeing other uh, tutorials around the internet. There is often uh, the storyboard file. So let's come into here, main.storyboard. And what you're presented with here is the interface builder. So we're going to be covering the interface builder in a couple videos, but I wanted to make this uh, introduction video as there is quite a few things going on here. So let's talk about it. So the interface builder helps you create visual layouts on an actual device and you can actually change this device. It also allows you to connect functions from your code, some bit of code that should happen to uh, an interaction. So for example, if you press a button, this code should fire. It also helps you apply styling, so colors, uh, padding, font size, things like that. And super important, it, hel it helps you apply constraints. So a constraint is basically uh, a rule that defines where a user interface element is placed on the screen. So the simplest example that I like to give is, let's say we put a button right here, and we want the button to always stay in the center of our device, whether our app is running on a larger iPhone, like the one here with the notch, or a smaller iPhone, like the iPhone 5S. So we can define constraints in our user interface elements, whether it's a button or a switch or an image, they'll adhere to those constraints. There are a variety of constraints, and again, I'm going to have another video for Interface Builder in general, but we're going to actually dive much deeper into constraints as it's something that I personally, uh, way back in the day when I was first learning this, struggled with, and something that um, several of my other students uh, need some time to pick up. So let's take a quick look around Interface Builder. So first and foremost, anything that has a .storyboard or .xib extension is uh, a file that can be opened up in Interface Builder. Um, now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the parts here. So in the middle here, we have our actual canvas um, where we can add our uh, different screens and UI and so on and so forth. On the left here, we have a hierarchy view of each of the elements we have. So uh, in other words, let's say we have another like view in here and we put an image in there and the inside that view we also have a button. This is a hierarchical representation of parent and children relationships of user interface elements. On the right over here, we have the inspector with a few tabs up here. So let's go through these really fast. So let's say we select the view here. We notice this changed. So from the left to the right, this first tab, uh, generally you're not going to be changing many things in here at all. Uh, there's a couple of ownership uh, items in here of who owns the class and uh, global colors, but very unlikely you'll be working in this particular tab. This next one uh, is also highly unlikely that you'll be working in, so we can skip it. Cool, this is where the fun stuff starts. So on this uh, panel, we can specify things about accessibility uh, for like screen readers. We can specify if there's a particular class that is an instance of whatever user interface element is here. We can specify that there. Uh, don't worry if you don't know exactly what that means. We're going to show uh, what this means with examples. Uh, moving on here, we can specify a bunch of visual attributes. So like a background color, for example. So if we wanted to make this this nice bright color here, we can change that right there. Pretty cool. Moving on over, we have this little ruler and we can specify constraints and sizes and anything size-wise in here. That's the ruler. And this last one is connections. So in our code, if we want to have a, a piece of code, a variable that we want to set the background color for, we can 
put the code, the actual reference variable, in our Swift file, and then we can drag actually that connection to a UI element. So I'm gonna actually show you that by, by putting it into practice. So those are actually called, if we head over to our view controller, an IB outlet. Uh, you can guess um, that the IB stands for interface builder. So there's actually two things I wanted to cover specifically. So the first thing is IB outlet and the next thing is IB action. So an IB outlet is defined by typing up here at IB outlet. It's a variable, you can give it whatever name you want. Let's call it my view. And we're gonna give it uh, a, a type. So we're gonna let it know, okay, what type of variable is this? And for the sake of this video, we'll do a UI view. And we'll put the exclamation mark there because we're gonna be telling Swift that we most definitely have this, it's not gonna be nil. And the way we know that is we're gonna go into Interface Builder and connect it. So if we head back to our storyboard and we drag on a UI view, um, and before I jump into this, if you tap this button here, you actually get a library of all the UI elements that are available to you. There's quite a few things in here, and we're going to come to know and love several of them throughout this video series. So let's search for a UI view. A view is basically just a very simple container, um, and we're just going to plop it on our, on our uh, screen right there. To connect the outlet, you're gonna right click over here, the thing that owns the outlet. So if we noticed, we typed our outlet in the view controller, right? Over here, we're gonna right click the view controller and look at that, we have our outlet, my view right here. And we can actually connect this to this view, like so. Now what that has actually done for us is in this code, when we modify anything on this, this is essentially references the white UI view we have on our screen. So if we run this app really fast, I want to actually do a little demo to uh, put this into practice. So if we run this app really fast, we'll see our yellow screen with a white UI view. Give it just a second. Let it load. There we go. So we have this yellow background and this white UI view, but we have this outlet that's now connected to that white container rectangle view. Once the view has loaded, let's say we want it to be blue. So we can say my view and assign its background color. And we can make it blue. Now notice we did all that in code and we didn't actually go to the interface builder and if you look now, it's blue. So it's super important that you understand the concept of outlets as they're used literally all over the place to create uh, references to our UI elements and then in our code, modify it uh, as we need. So if you think about it, let's take the Facebook app, for example. When you want to like a post, you'll tap the button and the button turns blue. So that button turns blue in code because what Facebook needs to do is they need to make sure your like has gone through. Once your like has gone through, it'll turn blue. Also, apologies for my fan on my computer that's probably causing a little bit of a ruckus right now. Um, but yeah, anyways, the second thing I want to cover is an IB action. So an IB action, similar to an outlet, is a way to reference a function in our code and connect it to an interaction in our interface builder, such as a button click. The way we do that is doing an at IB action and then creating a function and let's call it button tapped. And for the sake of the video, once this function fires, we're just going to print out some text. So now how do we actually link this? So very similarly, if we head back to our storyboard, we're gonna come into here in our library of UI elements and we're gonna find a button. And we're gonna drop a button right here in our white view. And again, we're gonna right click the thing that has the IB action in it. In other words, the owner, which is our view controller. 
And if we look down here, under this actions heading, we have our action. Now, it's important to note that the function we typed has IB action prefixed in the code. That's the reason it shows up here and the other functions don't. So IB action, the IB prefix lets it uh, become available here in the interface builder. So we're gonna connect this to this button. And this gives us a variety of things to choose from this dropdown. Now what this is asking us is on what event on this button should we fire this function? So uh, what we wanna pick is this event down here called touch up inside. This is very similar to a button click. It actually is a button click um, and it's called touch up inside for uh, a bit of a more verbose reason. But for the sake of this video, let's, uh, let's just pick touch up inside. And let's go ahead and run our app one more time. And let's open up our console. And because I'm using some, some keyboard shortcuts, I, I wanted to let you guys in on what I'm using. So if you actually hit Command Shift Y, you can close and open this bottom panel um, opposed to clicking up here. So let's go ahead and you can see the buttons right here. It's a little faint because we made the background of this view blue. But if we tap this, you'll see down here we're getting a print, which is awesome. So the interface builder is very powerful um, for a number of reasons. So do, to do a little bit of a recap, we need to understand how outlets work and we can have one or more outlets, or actually we can have zero or more, but generally you'll have one or more. We can have actions, which we can link to buttons and any other interaction that's going on with a UI element. So an example is, let's say we have a slider, like the slider on your phone that you use to control the volume for music playback. We can select uh, a slider to have a action for value changed. So now what that means is every time the value of that slider changes, AKA someone slid it, the IB action would fire. It's important to know that to access the IB action and outlets, you must right click the thing that owns it, AKA where that action and that function reside. In this case, it's the view controller. This space here is known as your main scene. You can have one or more screens here, which are also synonymous with the view controller. We went over these tabs here that have a variety of options. This view here is a hierarchy and actually to demonstrate uh, this concept I was explaining earlier, we added this white container view and notice it outlines it. And inside that we added a button. And if you notice, it's a very nice hierarchical representation of what's going on over here. To us, visually, this looks like it's one flat plane, but realistically, there is a Z axis here. And it's very important that you understand that these are things being added as children and sub views of another thing. So this button is a sub view to its parent of this UI view. So with that, I want to end the video right here. We're going to be diving deeper into Interface Builder in the upcoming videos. Uh, if you enjoy the video, throw a like on the video, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what I can improve, if I need to go faster, slower, uh, anything you have a question about, so on and so forth. Thanks. I'll see you in the next video.